welcome to this extra video. I don't mind my hair. I had a shower this morning and went right out to ride my horse. So this extra video is one that we do we did a couple years ago or we did last year. I can't remember. We got Gracie here. I don't know if you can see there's her nose. Um but it is Unpopular Opinions Horse Edition. I'm excited to have a few guests on our channel for this video, so stay tuned because you'll be hearing from some of our followers, some of our friends. I found one. Okay, so you found one. Gabby, do you have your phone down here? All right, so we're gonna do some Unpopular Opinions Horse Edition for you guys. We're gonna do a couple of... <laughs> Gracie, you're blocking out the sun. Gracie, go. You're bl blocking you out the sun. Okay, I have one. Burrs can be harsh, but if you see, use them correctly, they aren't harsh. They can be if you use them wrong. What is your opinion on using a crop? Trust me. Just like any other thing, like your bit or your spurs is a tool. And there's so many like different things behind it. So my thing is it should only be used when absolutely necessary. I rarely ever use my crop, and the reason I think it should be used very, like, not that often is, or not at all for that point, is because horses have thinner tissue, thinner, thinner um, tissue than humans, so their skin tissue is so much thinner than ours, so they feel more pain. So it hurts them more. It, like, it hurts them more, so if something hurts you, so I'll wax your crop and it hurts you, it's going to hurt them ten times more. So here's a good one. Having a groom doesn't make you a bad horse owner. And I feel passionate about this one because I want a groom. <laughs> Just joking. Okay, so here's what I think. Grooming your horse and tacking your horse up is a massive bond situation. It is where I build half of my bond with my horse in the saddle and tacking up. Those are like the two biggest places I feel like. In fact, on the ground, I feel like you build the biggest bond. Having said that, I think that people do the best that they can with what they have. If you have a groom, you probably adjust and do other things with your horse on the ground. A groom can be a good thing for sure. I do not want a groom. Maybe for when we're rushed, because like we got late to the barn. Yeah. And like we could focus on getting ourselves ready. And yeah. I mean, if you just had to show up at the barn and ride, it would be glorious. But I think I would miss that. That the horse is running like I, I love having my hands all over my horse and feeling every bit of her and I wouldn't want to give that to somebody else but I'm not knocking having a groom I can tell you if we had somebody to muck our stalls I'd be in I'd be all over that one Same. I mean a stable uh, hand not stable a hand okay, yeah so someone said falling off is fun okay unpopular opinion I think that buying a more advanced horse for somebody to learn and grow with is not wrong in any way it means they both have something to work on and will achieve it together one step at a time. And yeah, I totally agree with that. You wouldn't want to buy a horse completely untrained and put a beginner on it for sure, but lots of times, especially if you have a trainer, buying a horse that's a little bit more advanced would be better than buying a horse that you're gonna grow out of really quickly. For me, I've seen us grow into horses with the help of our trainer and I know it can be done. So I, I do believe that. Mares are way better than geldings. Are they? Yeah. Mares are better than geldings? Mm -hmm. What? Geldings are better than mares. I am shocked to hear that. Why do you think, do you see a mare in your yeah. future? Yeah. Oh, yes. I love me a mare. What do you like? Gelding. Hey guys, my name is Abby from Abby's Life with Horses. Some of you guys may know me from there. Some of you guys may not. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some unpopular opinions. So the first one that I have is you shouldn't judge someone by their riding ability. And honestly, that is something that I feel really passionate about and that I believe in so much. You should never judge someone for the ability that they are riding at, for the level that they are riding at. Um, everyone has their own path and their own journey and I think that everyone learns at a different pace as well and someone's writing ability does not define them as a person so you should really never um, really judge someone by their writing ability if you get what I mean. Uh, you shouldn't have to look a certain way in order to get a good placing at a show. Name, brand, size, body type shouldn't matter. Yeah, it does. It should not matter and do you think it does matter? No. 
I think it does matter. I think that shows can be really political sometimes and it depends on the area and it depends on what show series it is. It depends on a lot of things, but yeah, I've been told by professional people, like high up people in the industry that we would never survive at uh, a rated show because we don't have any of the proper stuff. We don't have the right kind oh, of horses. I don't support that. I don't support it. Do you support that? Do you believe it? Yes, because it's an easier way to win. It's an easier way to win? What do you mean? If you have all the things, it's an easier If you way have to all win. the things? I don't think it's right, though. I do believe that that does happen. I think the judge just goes for whoever, whose pony she likes, or he likes. Well, I think that, I mean. That's basically what judges do. They place whatever one they like the best. Yeah. And then that could be like personal preference. I mean, and it's even only though it's a big freaking Hertron Clydesdale whatever thing, and the rider falls off, but still in second. Like, yeah, like, we've had that happen before. But we've also had really amazing judges that have have done a really awesome job. So, like in every thing in life, stuff happens, and sometimes things are not fair. Hey guys, Tav the Hope here. Laura has sent some unpopular opinions that you guys have commented on their Instagram. So, the first one is Hackamores can be just as harsh as Bits. I agree with this, especially if the Hackamore doesn't fit properly because it can put pressure in the wrong places. But I also think it comes down to the rider and how balanced they are and how soft and supple their hands are when they ride. I think any bit can be really harsh and a Hackamore can be just as harsh as a bit um, if it's being used incorrectly. So I personally feel even a snaffle can become a really harsh bit in the wrong hands. And on the flip side, a harsher bit can be used in a gentle way if the rider's educated and they have soft hands. Does that make sense? So yes, I do agree that hackamores can be just as harsh as bit. How big you jump doesn't define, define how good of a rider you are. Come on, you're only a good rider if you can jump high. No. No. Do you think that? Gabby's like, yes, let's I all mean... jump high! The next one is, if you ride English, you can't possibly ride Western too. Um, that's almost like saying if you ride English, you can't possibly ride Western as well. Like, it's just, honestly, you can switch the cards on that as well. Um, to be honest, you do you. You can do both. You can do any. You can... Honestly, you can do what you want. Do whatever discipline that makes you happy. Do, like, however many disciplines that you want. Honestly, it doesn't really um, matter how many disciplines you do, whether you do one or two. Um, just because you ride English doesn't mean you can't ride Western. Um, but also just because you write western doesn't mean you can't write english like it's 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 different like they're totally different um disciplines to writing and they can't really be judged off of that you know what i mean arabs are the best breed they are not they're not i like arabians but i think that the best breed is the breed that you personally like the best i think everybody oh opinion, i thought you were gonna say Tennessee walker i think that everybody has a different opinion of what is the best breed and it is subject to what you what you like and everybody's best breed is different the second one is quite amusing. I feel in my soul as greys purposely roll in the dirt and get dirty just to piss you off. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100% agree. My second pony, I would wash him, get him ready for a show, get him all spotless, and then he would just find the dirtiest place and just roll. And so it got to the point where I wouldn't wash him the day before a show, I would wash him the morning of the show because he would just roll and just turn brown, like literally brown. It was disgusting. Thankfully both my boys now, Splash and Archie, Splash is the blue roan, that's Splash, Archie is a dapple grey. They are both ex-stallions so I'm lucky that they keep themselves reasonably clean because they care about their appearance because they are very interested in the mares. Unpopular opinion. I believe that it doesn't matter if other people like your horse just as long as you love them and a lot of people think that they need to get a horse other people like. Yeah, I agree with that. Like, there's so much pressure in the horse world to have a horse 
that people like because if your horse swishes its tail, pins its ears, does anything less than perfect, people are screaming, your horse is in pain, you're doing something wrong. Like there's so much pressure to have the perfect horse in the equestrian world. Like even at our low level, and when I bought Penny, I was worried about all the things people were gonna say about her, but knock on wood, it's been not too bad. Uh, and this is wood? Knock on wood. I it hasn't, hasn't been terrible, but I've seen it a million times, and it's true. There's a lot of pressure to have a horse that everybody likes, but I agree with whoever said that unpopular opinion. You gotta go out there and love your horse and love what you have and make the best of of the kind of horse that you have and what you can do with them. Even if your horse can't jump, even if your horse can only go on trails, or or even if your horse is just a pasture pet that you just go out there and groom and love, love what you have. Spurs are a good tool. Spurs are a good tool, I do believe that, um, except when they are used incorrectly. A spur that's used incorrectly can actually really harm a horse. Um, if you're using it as a direct tool and it's not being harmful, it doesn't actually hurt the horse, it just helps you and the horse as a team effort, not just you trying to get the horse moving because you're too lazy to try to get it moving. Um, then, yeah, it, it, it can be a little bit different in, in that sort of part where um, I do believe that spurs can be a tool, but if you overuse the spurs and you just like, you just rely on the spurs, then it just becomes a problem and, you know, that's kind of a bad problem, to be honest, um, in my opinion. Spurs can be used as a tool, but if they're used incorrectly, they're just, what are they? They're an abuse tool, exactly. Um, but yes, I do definitely believe that they can be a tool and really helpful and useful. Waterfords aren't harsh. Okay, that's a tricky one. They are not harsh. I believe what our trainers have told us is a bit is only as harsh as the person that that rides in it. <laughs> I love this one. And the last unpopular... I can't talk. <laughs> and the last unpopular opinion is just because you can't jump or you don't jump high doesn't mean you're not a good rider. Something I hear a lot on social media is like, oh, you need to be jumping a meter high or a meter 10 or a meter 15 to be a good rider. And if you're jumping under a certain height, then you're not as good of a rider as someone else who is jumping high. Personally, I feel the height that you jump doesn't correlate with your worth as a rider because I think there are a lot of factors that go into it. Like some people just don't like jumping, um, they don't find it enjoyable and it's not something that they want to focus on. Other people have horses that don't enjoy jumping, other people don't have the horsepower to jump high. Say for example you have a Grand Prix dressage rider and they only jump 60 and you compare them against a Grand Prix show jumper who jumps a meter 60. Like you're not going to look at them and think that one's better than the other because they're both equally as talented just in different areas. And the same goes for like across different disciplines. Like you're not going to compare an English rider with a Western rider. And it's also really unfair to compare people who have completely different horses. Like some people they're going to have the ability to be able to get a horse that can jump high and other people aren't going to have that money. That doesn't make them any less or more of a rider. And then you can also look at it as like some people technically are able to jump high, but do they do it well, you know? Like someone who's going around and making a meter without any mistakes, it's nice and flowy, it's like they're perfectly in tune with their horse. And then you look at someone who's doing meter 15, let's just say, and they're getting refusals, they're getting in front of the horse's movement, they're getting left behind. Like there are just so many different factors and I don't think that what height you can jump or what height you do jump is going to mean that you're any better or worse of a rider than someone who doesn't jump at all. Because everyone's unique, everyone's talented in their own ways, and everyone has their own interests in riding. Some people just ride for pleasure, and I really admire that. But I also know that this mentality of like equating your worth to the height you jump is something that is so prominent on social media and so prominent in the equestrian community so don't beat yourself up for thinking like that because I find myself thinking like that and I've got to remind myself like oh yeah 
actually I have more qualities than just the height that I jump. And yeah, like some people are going to be able to afford a horse that can jump really big and other people aren't. Um, and I think it would be really unfair to compare the two because that p the person who doesn't have the horsepower could be just as capable as the person that does have this amazing horse, like within their position and all that. But the only thing stopping them is money and yeah, money. Money is a whole controversial topic, so I'll leave that aside. I don't know, that's just what I take on that situation. Let me know if you agree or disagree. I love hearing different views on stuff in the horse world. And also just a quick thank you to Day by Day Vlogs for letting me come back on the channel again. I hope you guys are all doing well and are staying safe, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. You and your kids are always wanting more and never take time to appreciate what you have. Do you believe that? No. Do you believe that? No. Oh, I always want more. I appreciate every single thing that I have. I like can't believe the horses that we have. I love every single one of them and I think that they are all amazing and perfect for us, but I will never stop believing and dreaming at the next big amazing experience for me and for my family. I want to die having lived hard and done everything that I wanted to do. So I am always going to keep dreaming and believing and moving forward. I am always going to be thankful and happy with what I have. Okay, this one is one that um, I do believe in like a lot. Um, it doesn't matter how expensive your horse is um, to be able to show and to be able to get to like big shows and stuff like that absolutely freaking lootly it does not matter whatsoever how expensive your horse is whether it's 10 grand to free to good home it literally does not matter i had no rescue horses that are now amazing show horses that have just transformed into this just amazing beautiful horse like there is no just because it has a price on it does not make it a perfect horse it literally does not make a perfect horse just because it's a free to good home horse put it this way my horse seal actually was a free to good home if i didn't really get seal he would not be here today i don't think so don't listen to people who say that your horse will never be this or that because it matters that you believe in them I agree. It matters that you believe in your horse, just like the other one. Just like the other unpopular opinion. Love what you have. Love your own horse. Quarter horses aren't just for western riding. You believe it? Yeah. The next one um, is green riders can ride green horses along, as long as they have a trainer with them and have riding experience. Um, in my opinion this is my opinion in my opinion yes but in other opinion no um if you're going to put a complete beginner on a green horse who has hardly been ridden educated or anything like that who you put you're literally putting both of the rider and horse um at risk pretty much you're putting both of them at risk um so i wouldn't put a complete beginner on I would medium to experienced rider on a green horse. I probably would never put a beginner beginner on a green horse. It just really depends on their riding experience. Um, put it this way, honestly, you wouldn't want to put anyone in danger. That is all I have um, for this little video. I just want to say thanks to Day by Day for featuring me in it and stuff. Um, it was super, super fun and I hope everyone has a good day. Bye. Dressage work is very important for all disciplines. Do you think dressage work is important for all disciplines? Do you? Yes. That is for, for, that is for sure. Hi guys, I am Anika from Ronnie's Equine Siblings and today I am going to react from the unpopular opinion of you shouldn't judge a person on their riding ability by the height that they are jumping at. Uh, so this correlates with our recent video that we have just done. This really should not be an unpopular opinion because in our equestrian community, unfortunately, there is quite a lot of bullying and uh, judging. What I think is that if someone can be an amazing dressage rider and not even jump at all, so how would that affect their riding ability if they're doing five-star dressage or 
they just love hacking out and they've got an amazing set. So I don't think we should judge the jumping part of the riding world with every other section of riding. I think everyone has their strengths and weaknesses. And a rider that's maybe jumping 30 centimeters may only feel comfortable jumping that high, or they may be jumping that high just for the confidence of their own horse. For me myself, I jump low because it's a personal choice and it doesn't reflect on my riding ability and it does not reflect on anyone other's riding ability on the height that they jump. So thank you very much for the person who put this unpopular opinion on because it definitely did need to be spoke about. Have a good day guys. You will never be an a horse expert. You will always be learning and growing and, and changing. Do you agree with that one? Yeah. Yeah, mm, me yeah. too. Whips are abusive if used properly? Honey, they're not abusive if they're used properly. So that's a good one. Do you guys think that whips are abusive even if they're used properly? What do you think? Uh, whips are not abusive if they're used properly. What do you think? I think the same thing as Gavin. I think that I will never hit my horse with a whip. I, I... Your horse doesn't need a whip. My horse does not need a whip. I do not like whips. Gracie, I don't hit my kids and I'm not gonna hit my horse and I'm glad you don't hit I understand that in a traditional kids is illegal. I understand it should be illegal to hit a horse too, I think. Uh, I, I understand that in traditional horse training and horse riding that crops are used. I understand how they're used and I understand the entire concept behind it. It's not for me. I believe there are other ways. I believe there are better ways. I believe that the world is changing and that we're gonna get to there. We're gonna get to that new spot where they're not acceptable. Right now they're acceptable. And it's sad. What's your opinion on selling, selling your horse um, for, for any reason? Like whatever, just say you have one horse and you know you like to have two horses at a time. They say they're pound animals. But you say you have two horses and you use them for something and then the one is no longer good like what do you what's your, your thought be on that one no longer good for what you want it for what's your thought on that what you want to afford or what you want to do what you want to do with it yes. um i think it's fine with selling horses because when you really think about it if you didn't sell your horses or you didn't sell horses that were no longer suitable for you there wouldn't like someone out there may be looking for that you have but you don't want to sell it just because you don't want to sell it so like think of it this way when you're selling your horse you're selling it to someone who could continue using it for what they want to do so I, right. think it's, I think it's okay to sell your horse so if you don't have people are selling horses other people can't buy horses right Lemieux is overpriced you think Lemieux is overpriced no do you think Lemieux is overpriced do you even know the price of the I a hundred dollars. Yeah, for a saddle pad. Eighty pen. to a hundred dollars. Yeah, for a saddle pad. But I'm into Ogilvy right now. So I do not think that it's overpriced because a lot of the the saddle pads in our area are the same price as that. Um, I don't think most of their stuff is overpriced because their stuff their stuff is made with quality. Like they actually are made well. Paying $100 for a saddle pad that's not made well or for a bridle that's not made well is a rip off to me, but when you're paying for quality, I don't think it's over. There should be a license given out to horse owners to prove you are worthy of keeping it as there is just a way too many irresponsible owners out there. Yeah, I think that even if everybody had to have a license, there would still be irresponsible owners. I don't think you would ever get away with that. Being required to take a class before you owned horses, I could, th I think that could work out. To ride a boat in Ontario, you have to go online and complete a test and get a license. So I think that could be reasonable for horses. I also think that if you do ever get horses, I also believe that anybody who gets a horse should have a sponsorship of some type. Somebody that has experience should be guiding them and training them and teaching them. That's how we did it. I can't imagine us just going out and getting a horse and not having anybody to help us. Horses don't need a mane or tail. They do. They, they do. do. Holy heck, they do. They need just a not a long mane. They need a short mane and long tail. 
that is it for today's extra video you guys hope you liked it everybody likes good unpopular opinion thank you so much to anybody who collaborated in this video and sent me clips for me to share i loved all of your responses it means a lot to me to have other people weigh in and share in our equestrian journey and i thank you guys so much for sharing your opinions with us and with our viewers that is it for this extra video and we'll see you guys tomorrow bye don't you know that you're beautiful?